students, welcome back to the Heath. It's a squally day and this is the sort of weather that Shakespeare uses to stage the aftermath of the murder of King Duncan. As if to say, nature weeps for the king's death. Nature weeps for the king. When we last saw Macbeth, he was hallucinating a dagger. He pulls out a real dagger and he's been up to mischief all night. At Inverness Castle, where we see on the battlements Lady Macbeth waiting for her husband to return, having done the uh, dreadful deed. Just to summarise the scene before her husband joins her, allow me to set the stage. We have King Duncan covered in a now bloody sheet. Just below him sleeps his guards, and it's worth noting that that in the bedchamber next door are not just one but two sons, Malcolm and Donald Bain. We can also see Macbeth on his way back to meeting his wife with the two bloody daggers. We'll now join Lady Macbeth and Macbeth later on talking and really showing us that they are unravelling psychologically, but it's down to Lady Macbeth's assertiveness and self-control to take charge of the situation later. That which made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark! Peace! It was the owl that shrieked, the fatal bellman which gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. They drug their possets that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? What? Ho? Alack, I'm afraid they have awakened and tis not done. The attempt to knock the deed confounds us. Hark! I laid their daggers ready. You could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. Hark, who lies in the second chamber? Donald Bain. Oh, this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh in his sleep. And one cried murder, that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen, the other. As they had seen me with these hangman's hands, listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce Amen? I had most need of blessing and Amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep, the innocent sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life, sore labour's bath, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still it cried sleep no more to all the house. Glamis have murdered sleep, and therefore Cordor shall sleep no more, Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy Thane, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I've done. Look on it again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose, give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? What hands are here? Ha! They pluck out mine eyes. 
Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas in incarnadine, making the green one red. My hand's of your colour, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it, then? Your constancy hath left you unattended. Hark, more knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us, and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, to a best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst 